Max, yeah. Um, I already saw someone uh, on Twitter did a, uh, what's the lead singer of Nickelback's name? Chris Hansen, is that? No, that's Ch 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 Okay, so I've already seen uh, some some gifts on, on that piece, so we're, we're, uh, we're excited. I'm excited to, uh, excited to be the Nickelback's coach here at SMU, pretty coordinator. Are you a Nickelback fan? Um, I definitely was. Uh, I think I went to a Nickelback concert in Charleston, West Virginia, where I'm from. Circa it had to be 2002 or three, yeah. and uh, I wouldn't say it was one of the best nights of my life, but um, <laughs> it was certainly up there. My first concert was 98 Degrees, and so we're talking just <laughs> classics, Matchbox 20 in Morgantown. Mm -hmm. And so when a musical act came to West Virginia, and specifically Charleston, West Virginia, you needed to go mm -hmm. because there was not much else happening there. So we, we went to Britney Spears, Nickelback, Matchbox 20, like I said, we. We hit the gamut, so yeah. But no, I, not today. Am I a fan of Nickelback? That's it. But that needs to be out. There's a couple good songs. That is good. Yeah. You're a fan of Nickelbacks. Nickelbacks, yeah. So still learning. Um, Coach Simon's uh, system in terms of what that means personnel-wise. Uh, I can tell you, there's we don't have. Uh, I don't have, you know, a flood of Nickelbacks that I'm responsible for right now. We got to get on the turf, uh, get on the grass with those guys, and see who's a fit for that role. Uh, I know that it's gonna be a situation where um, they're gonna be asked to do some jobs that uh, you know not a, a guy like me can't do, an unathletic guy. Uh, so we're gonna have to ask uh, a lot of that person, whoever that, that becomes. What are some of those traits or roles that those guys are gonna have to fill uh, once you kind of identify the dudes who can't win? Sure, yeah, no, it's been uh, the last two days getting uh, acquainted or familiarize with the beginnings of what Scott wants to do on defense. Uh, I think they're gonna just have to be uh, able to mix it up in the run while also asked to do more than a Mike linebacker in coverage, so. How, how critical is that position come? I feel like as, you know, offenses have evolved, that has become such a valuable position and, and such a, and a lot of defenses are a big time playmaker. How much have you seen that, you know, hybrid safety, you know, nickel guy just become valuable in, in modern college defense? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. Uh, I know in the past five years with Rhett, we've really tried to see who's the alley player for, for opposing defenses. Um, is, he, is he a slug? Is he a guy we can take advantage of? And so as offenses have spread out uh, and the tight end uh, has become a more athletic guy in the pass game, that position has become so vital. I mean, we saw it really the Seattle Seahawks and the Legion of Boom. That was kind of the beginning of that that hybrid system where those guys were not just um, you know run run stoppers, but needed to be a dynamic guy. So I think it's as offenses evolve, that's probably the one position where you can see on the field um, having evolved with it the most, in my opinion. Along those lines, to have three defensive backs position coaches is not something you see a lot. Is that really a testament to where football has gone? That it's important that. It should differentiate those? Yeah, sure. And, um, you know, speaking to that, Chris, I think it's a situation where, where when I was being hired by Coach Lashley, where did I fit on the defense side of the ball? And with what Scott does, I think it was a combination of those two things coming together. Uh, and then just having the experience that Coach Hundley and Coach Niver are going to bring uh, to help me, uh, specifically my first year back on defense. Uh, it, it, it goes a little bit hand-in-hand hand with where, where the game's gone and then where we were at systematically. I asked Johnny, um, you know, if there were ever any points where he thought about, you know, maybe taking another off or kind of leaving under the wing of, of Brett. Um, obviously, you've also followed Brett for a while. Right. First off, how did you link up with him originally? Was it UConn? And then, ultimately, did you have other opportunities that, that you maybe had to say, you know what, I kind of want to stick here with Brett? Yeah, sure. There's, there's, it's a funny background. I was on the uh, 20... Uh, 16 staff of uh, Bob Diaco. Just make sure my years are right there. Coach Diaco's last staff in Connecticut. Uh, I was a, a GA there. I got there in June uh, and worked that year. Unfortunately, that staff was let go. Or, I mean, it ended up being a fortunate thing in my profession, in my career, uh, personally. But uh, Coach Diaco's staff got let go. I was a graduate assistant there. Uh, Randy Edsel got hired. Uh, Brett Lashley was hired as offensive coordinator. Brett was hired as OC. And uh, for two weeks, I was uh, in flux whether I had a job. Uh, so it was one of those things where I was the only GA left and it was recruiting weekends, official visits, and I just, I just hustled. Um, and and uh, the work ethic proved through and uh, about halfway through spring ball, Brett 
it was just me, him, and, and Coach Brewer in the uh, offensive staff room and let me know that I was going to uh, have the opportunity to stay there at UConn. And then um, to, to your second question, um, Joe, the, I did leave Brett for a short time, actually. I, uh, after uh, his year at UConn, I accepted the job at Robert Morris, which is my alum, the FCS school in Pittsburgh. I was going to be the tight ends coach, restricted earnings type of role. But um, on our way out, so I think it was maybe a day apart, I told him if there was an opportunity to SMU as a GA, I would, I would really love to do that. So I, I ended up hitting the road for a uh, mile long uh, for a few weeks, uh, recruiting through signing day, and then you know went to uh, first year head coach at the time, Bernard Clark, who's still the head coach there, Robin Morris, told him I was uh, taking a job at SMU. Uh, and so that was a hard knock on the door, but I, I couldn't um, imagine things being different. And since then, I kind of knew I was uh, gonna be with him for the foreseeable future.